technologically illiterate people had to yeah. become literate because they were motivated by money. So you were not mo you're motivated by a few dollars, but you're not motivated by a permanent paradise. Wow. That's ridiculous. And you you don't have that hunger anymore, and then obviously things start to fall apart. I had the choice to make: Do you go to trial? and end up getting 10 years and end up being a sex offender on a crime you didn't commit. That was the first time like somebody told me something that like I couldn't see or touch and I believed it. Islam teaches you prevention and not cure. Prevention over the cure. So I lot protected you pretty much. Um, oh man. You could have been doing much more time. The person woke up so the sentence went, went down. So pretty much I wanted to know because you mentioned this in one of your videos where you finally took your Shahada. You've been going in and back and forth out of jail. Obviously, you lived out a street lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You was heavily influenced. But at the same time, you took your Shahada. But when you first took your Shahada, it was just like, let me just take my Shahada so I won't look crazy in front of people. So can you kind of re revamp that story to the people who never heard it before? Yeah, so... Basically, when on Rikers Island, we used to get cigarettes. Right. You know, the adults used to be able to obtain cigarettes. And the adolescents, which I was at the time, we used to buy our cigarettes from the adults. You know, and there came a time where they banned cigarettes in totality on Rikers Island. So we couldn't even get to the adults and give them cookies or commissary to give us cigarettes. So... At this stage, police officers started to bring in the paraphernalia or the contraband or whatever you have you. So as adults, they would get most of, you know, the, the drugs, the cigarettes and all of that from the COs. So, you know, we was paying $20 for a pack of Newports at the time. And I was smoking, but I wasn't using marijuana. I was just, you know, smoking cigarettes. So I hit my sister up like, yo, I need you to bring me $20 on the visiting floor. And she was like, well, you know, my husband is in there born. He was in there at the time, 5%. Now. Obviously, we know what type of kufr this is. And um, I was like, yo, she said, he has somebody in there that's that's moving, that's shaking. I was like, word. All right, plug me in. So one day I'm in the day room. Mind you, at this time, this is my crib, you know, two up on north side. And Miss Feliciano, I never forget the CEO, female, Spanish. She said, Nesbit. That's my last name. She called me to the bubble. I'm like, hey, what's going on? She like, oh, the imam wants to see you. I'm like, what's that? She's like, oh, it's the religious leader. It's over here by the chapel. You got to go down here. So this is where the gym was, and I play ball. You know, if y'all y'all know, I, I've been playing ball for a minute. So this whole time, I've been walking back and forth past a, a, a quote-unquote masjid or, you know, a place of prayer for the musallah for the Muslims, and didn't know it was right next to the chapel. So on my way down, I see a I see a Muslim. I don't know he's Muslim because I don't know what a Muslim is. <laughs> How I'm old are you at this 18, time? Eighteen, living in New York and never, never ripped, been exposed. Never been exposed to Islam. So from there, oh, Allah, yo, listen, I, I had to shout him out, listen, listen, bro. Shout, come on with all that, Doc. Listen, <laughs> don't be here a saying pivotal, a huh? pivotal point in my Islam. Saying some Baltic, something nah, in front of my books. Nah, I got you. I, I really wanted to do it. big facts. <laughs> yeah, right. HD, King Faisal. Allah, at the end of the day, listen. If peace, no, Jazakallah khair. <laughs> Kibara Ulama just pulled up on us. Sure, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Alhamdulillah. So, so um, from there, what happened was, so I never been exposed to Islam. I seen this guy. He got on a kufi. Don't know what a kufi is. He got on his chain. It says a law on it. I know it now. You know, silver. So he's like. I'm like, he's like, yo, Matthew. I'm like, yeah, yeah, what's going on? He's like, yo, my name is Muhammad. Like, imagine that. <laughs> Muhammad. Like the name of the Prophet. Salam. He said, my name is Muhammad. I'm like, okay, yo, my, yo, my name is, you know, means sinister. They call me da 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 da. He's like, you Keisha, brother, right? I'm like, yeah, da 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 da. He's like, yo, let's go in here. 
it was the imam's office the outside imam i get in the outside imam's office and the imam was imam askia we had two imams from the outside at the time imam jalani and imam askia they would come in give the khutbah take turns you know ping pong give us classes so I was like, oh, how you doing? I met him. They sat me down. They was like, yo, you need any food, any clothes, any anything? They opened up this big thing. They said it was a sadaka box, soups, sweaters, hoodies. I'm like, nah, I'm good because we wore our own clothes on Rikers Island, you know? And then he was like, yo, you need to make a call. I'm like, yeah. So nine and out. I just hit the number nine and I dialed out. So, you know, free phone call right in the imam's office. Called my sister. I'm like, yo, I'm here. Mohammed, she's like, yeah, you good. Boom. Hung up. Obviously, the outside imam don't know what's going on. Yeah. Okay. Right, so Muhammad tells me after all of this, yo, come down here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and on Friday at such and such time. So I'm like, tell you, yo, I'm good. All right, he gives me what he gives me, which is obviously the cigarettes. Gives me some, but he was spoon feeding me. So from there, you know, I would just go down every day, and I would just see a mount. I mean, this the 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 ma, the, the musala was packed with Muslims. They was giving classes, and I never like later on. I didn't understand how serious that was. It used to be like it was Juma on a regular day there on a Monday, Tuesday, and it you know, on the, on the island it was it was C seventy four. Adolescents at war. They said it was, it was you know it was serious. And later on, as a Muslim, we not when we we had regular day classes it was not like that. It was not like Juma, right? Okay. And I seen people just, you know, on the floor, heads on the floor. You know, I'm like, yo, what is what? Like, it was like a, it was like another another world. It was like a secret society. I was like, oh, something's. So I just waited in the back, sat in a chair while they did what they did. After I was done, sometimes I would fall asleep. He would just come through at the end, hit me off with what I needed to get hit off with, you know. And then from there. He started to give me a slam. Yo, what you think? You should just turn Muslim. And I'm like, ah, I ain't ready. Yo, you should just. And I'm like, yo, I'm not ready. And then, you know, like he was like really forcing it on me. <laughs> and and I and I and I kid you not to this day, I don't even remember if I told him yes or no. One day I'm just in there. Oh, and I don't and I don't mean to tell you this the, um, to to make it clear he was the emir right. so he led the muslims mind you and he was using or uh, using haram to yeah so he was the outside i mean he was the inside emir so i go to the mosque one day in the, the musalla and i'm in the back i go to the back and he's in the front well alhamdulillah right. and um He's giving a little talk and he's doing what he's doing. So I'm in the back and I'm just chilling. You know, mind you, gold teeth, braids, you know, got the jeans on with all of the basketball teams on it. Yeah, you you, you old enough I for that? For sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I'm in that joint. Yeah, yo, <laughs> yo, so he says, because everybody was calling me his nephew. They thought that was my uncle. He was like, yo, my nephew's ready to take shahada. <laughs> Out of the blue. Bro, yo, bro, I kid you not. This is why I say, yo, Allah Taala is real. Can nobody ever say anything different or convince me? Inshallah, everybody turns. So now I'm on the spot. So he like nephew, get up here. My heart beating fast. I just walk through everybody, stepping over everybody. I'm telling you, the masjid is packed. I sit down in front of him. He tell me X, Y, Z, say this, stick your finger out. Next you know, everybody's screaming, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Hugging me, I'm Muslim. I go back to the to the block, I'm eating pork grinds, beating dudes up. I'm still doing the same old stuff because I don't know the significance of Muslims. But at that moment, you said you felt that you was like, you couldn't say no because of the... It was the pressure. the pressure. It was yeah. So I at the time, did I accept Islam sincerely? Nah, I would say it wasn't. Finally, it's cause it's crazy because I talk about this in my like two episodes ago where the brother who had just accepted Islam was talking about how many people could come into Islam not knowing what Islam is and just take us hard and then later on the Iman can actually take their heart, overtake their heart. Allah, Allah could do as he please. Nah. 
and that and that's that's how that resulted and eventually i saw the building because of one of my friends that accepted islam and they basically showed me up one day and from there it started to get real for me because i was competitive yes i can see that in your videos yeah 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 alhamdulillah and then from there i just never looked back you know you know